Why introduce intercropping for perennial crops? The benefits are numerous. But let us start with profitability. To be fair, the same area of land with less coffee or cocoa plants may provide lower respective yields. But this is compensated by the harvest of additional crops. Agroforestry systems can reach higher combined yields and better economic viability as monocultures. Initial investments are generally higher for intercropping systems. However, benefiting from the healthy ecosystem in intercropped plantations, perennial crops are more resilient over time and can produce for longer. Shaded coffee or cocoa can produce for 40 to 60 years in extreme cases compared with the usual 20 to 25 years in monocropping systems. This means a better return of investment for the farmer. And let's not forget, farmers benefit from secondary crops as food supply for household use or as additional sources of income where markets for these products can be assessed. This means higher food security, increased and more balanced incomes throughout the year, and reduced risks from crop failures or price instabilities related to the main crop. Moreover, intercropping leaves more roots in the ground and improves soil health and farm productivity in the long term. Tree roots protect from soil erosion, fallen leaves enhance humus content and soil life. Trees generally support water infiltration and water holding capacity of soils. They can reduce evapotranspiration and improve microclimate in the plantations in addition to sequestering carbon and mitigating climate change. Leguminous plants reduce fertilizer needs as they fix atmospheric nitrogen and increase nitrogen availability for other crops. Compared to monocultures, biodiverse coffee and cocoa systems have more pollinators and beneficial organisms. In such a healthy ecosystem, pest and disease incidence is usually lower. But careful! If planting density is too high, the resulting air humidity can also lead to more fungal diseases such as coffee leaf rust. Increased complexity of intercropping thus requires not only a higher initial workload, but also more knowledge, technical skills and the ability to continuously evolve and adapt decision-making. For more substantial impacts of regenerative farming, however, we need to look beyond the single farm. Landscape management approaches aim at addressing critical environmental, social and climate issues that extend beyond individual farm boundaries into the surrounding communities, farming landscape and forests. Mitigating climate change, for example, needs joint efforts of enhancing climate-smart farming practices and reducing deforestation in a wider landscape. We should therefore integrate intercropping and functionally connect intensive land use with areas of high ecological value. This offers better options to achieve multiple goals of food security, commercial opportunities, biodiversity and carbon sequestration. Nestle is committed to the landscape stewardship approach in an ecosystem of collaboration which involves the connection of people, ideas, research and technologies. Remember, diversity both at farm and at landscape scales is key to more resilient and sustainable food systems.